hour of temptation is getting close, you guys. This is Bakayar Amana. I'm going to put this up on my Matazilakam channels until I can make another channel. But uh, the famine of the word is coming, too. Uh, they want to try to take down uh, any videos that have any truth in them concerning with the plans at this global domination agenda that they've got going on. So, listen to this. G20 just officially announced they are launching a plan for a global framework for digital currencies and digital IDs. Watch. Laying the building blocks for a globally coordinated and comprehensive policy and regulatory framework for crypto assets. The global push for clearer policies on crypto assets has gained momentum under the Indian presidency and a global consensus is emerging on the same. The presidency will support the IMF and the FSB in, and FSB is also setting the contours of the regulatory framework for a globally coordinated approach to crypto assets. So the presidency with the support of IMF and the FSB is setting these contours. The IMF and FSB synthesis paper about which I've spoken to the media earlier, including a roadmap. On that, I just want to give my observation. This synthesis paper delves into how the policy and regulatory frameworks developed by the IMF and the FSB alongside the other standard setting bodies will fit together and interact with each other. This paper is now available in the public domain for all of you all to see. Now, crypto was initially portrayed as a way to decouple from the central banks and to provide a layer of anonymity, just like using cash, right? But that's not what this is at all. In fact, it's quite the opposite. This is about the rollout of central bank digital currencies, or CBDCs. Now, the central banks have been working on this for quite a long time, and they have been partnering with governments and private corporations to usher this in. It kind of sounds like fascism, right? But what does it mean? Well, we've already witnessed how the central banks have been using a debt-based system to essentially enslave entire nations. And soon they'll have the ability to monitor, regulate, and tax you into submission in every way imaginable. And before you know it, you'll be eating bugs and driving electric cars. Or at least that's their plan if they get their way. Now what the social engineers are rolling out is called a digital panopticon or a digital prison. This is where the digital IDs come into play. The third one which I'd like to draw your attention to is the financial inclusion and productivity gains through digital public infrastructure. India, as you are aware, through the India stack, became the first country to develop all three foundational DPIs, the digital identity, the real-time fast payment, and a platform to safely share personal data without compromising privacy. So embedded this concept in the G20 financial inclusion agenda by formulating G20 policy recommendations for advancing financial inclusion and productivity gains through digital public infrastructure. The fact they're announcing it now means they're about ready to roll it out. And once we go down this road, I'm not sure we can come back. The G20 announcement also coincides with what I believe Elon Musk has planned for X, as they have recently announced they've obtained approval for payments, including cryptocurrencies, and will begin to collect users' biometric data and other personal information this month. Kind of sounds like compliance with the global digital ID agenda that was just announced at the G20, but that's just my opinion, right? Maybe, maybe not. Welcome to